Hey Bethel, Derek here. Today we get a few minutes to talk about prayer. Through my relationships around the church, I get the opportunity to observe many different people's approach to prayer. I see students who are fearful to pray out loud because they think they don't know the right words, or I see them being unfocused while others are praying. I see older believers disappointed that after all the years, they are not a better prayer warrior. I see hundreds of us in the congregation every Sunday who are hurting or need to confess, but are too proud to have someone else pray over us. I see church meeting where prayer is a perfunctory opening or closing or a transition between topics. And frankly, I see myself in my own house just clicking play on the next podcast to fill the silence instead of using the quiet as an opportunity to speak with God. In short, it's easy for me to get frustrated when I think about prayer. But then hopefully, I stop and I actually pray. Instead of just thinking about my frustrations over prayer and allowing those thoughts to spiral in my own head and affect my heart, I take those frustrations to the Lord and Savior who does the supernatural work of prayer in my heart. This is the work that I am completely incapable of doing myself, but by God's power, we see the effects in my heart. And I think this is demonstrated beautifully by David in Psalm 55. David begins his prayer in verses 2 and 3 saying, I am restless in my complaint, and I moan because of the noise of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked. Then over the course of this prayer, he doesn't just sit in his feelings in his own head, but he actually addresses them and takes them to God. He ends in verse 23 saying to God, but I will trust in you. The supernatural work of prayer is done in David's heart to get himself out of his own head and fix his eyes on the God of the universe who holds David's issues in his loving hands. This all may sound lofty and unachievable for you and for me when we think about prayer, and frankly, it is unachievable for us. But as Christians, we have these twin assurances as our foundation when it comes to prayer. From Romans 8, That is, Jesus, who was resurrected, is at the right hand of God, who is interceding for us. And we have the Holy Spirit who helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. We do not have to question these realities as believers. And so we can follow the lead of Psalm 62.8 and pour our heart out before him. May this free us, Bethel, to recognize the encouragement of Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 and to pray without ceasing. All of life can now be a prayer as we rest in the assurance of the placement of Jesus on our behalf, the work of the Holy Spirit, and get out of our own thoughts and actually bring our requests to God. May this define us as a people and as a church. Now may we prayerfully Go and be blessed.